Welcome back to another Mosaic.org tutorial. Mosaic is a platform for med students to learn medicine. Med students, check it out. We're talking uh, in this series of tutes on the facial nerve, and in our last tutorial, we talked about the facial nerve's functions and nuclei, and now we're going to talk about its course. It has a very long and complex course, um, and you can divide its course into three sections. It's got an intracranial course, it's got an extracranial course, and the way that it goes from the two is through the temporal bone. So it's got an intratemporal course. In this tube, we're just going to talk about the intracranial section, which is about 30 millimeters long. Uh, just for an overview, the intracranial section goes from the brainstem um, to the end of the internal auditory canal. So when it comes off the brainstem, the facial nerve comes off at the level of the pontomedullary junction, at the bottom of the pons. And it actually comes off as two separate nerves. It doesn't come off as a single nerve, it comes off as two nerves. So the nerve here in yellow is one root. That is the motor root. And the fibers of that motor root are coming from the facial motor nucleus. So all of those fibers are going to innervate muscles of the second pharyngeal arch, so they're branchiomotor fibers or special visceral efferent fibers. And what happens is they, um, the cell bodies are sitting in the facial motor nucleus and they have to then actually wrap around the sixth nerve's nucleus. And the reason they have to do that is because during development, the sixth nerve goes from sitting right next to the facial motor nucleus to then ascending. Uh, ascending up to basically almost abutting the fourth ventricle. And as it does that, it pulls the fibers of the facial motor nucleus, which were running across it, uh, with it, so that they're not able to just directly exit the brain stem. They've actually got to wrap around the sixth nerve nucleus, and then, and then they're able to come back out, and they come back out as the single, um, as the single fibers of the facial motor root at the level of the pontomedullary junction. Now, there's another nerve, which is the eighth cranial nerve, I've just kind of drawn it in here, the eighth cranial nerve, which is the vestibular cochlear nerve, and it is leaving very close to the facial motor root. There's only a distance, I've kind of drawn it in here, there's a distance of about 1.5 millimeters between them, so that uh, uh, they're really sitting very close. But actually, in between that facial motor root and uh, the vestibular cochlear nerve, there's another nerve, which is carrying the other fibers of the facial nerve. And the nerve that's sitting between those fibers is called the nervous intermedius. Nervous intermedius, because it's like in between the vestibular cochlea and the motor root. And so it is carrying the fibers of the tractus solitarius of the spinal trigeminal nucleus and the superior salivatory nucleus. It's carrying the other three fiber types. And these two roots of the facial nerve, they intertwine and become one somewhere in the internal uh, auditory canal. So I've got a picture of some imaging here, and you can see that they're, they're marked out in green. It's still a bit difficult to see, but you can basically see the nerves leaving the pontomedullary junction uh, in this uh, coronal section. And then in this axial, you can see uh, where they actually course through. So what we've got here is we've got one border that's formed by the cerebellum and another border that's formed by the pons. And you can see how the junction of those makes an angle, which is called the cerebellar pontine angle. And so as the nerves leave at the level of the pontomedullary junction, they're coursing through the cerebellar pontine angle. So the facial motor root, the nervous intermedius, and the vestibular cochlear nerve, they're all coursing through the cerebellar pontine angle, which is how they leave the brainstem at the level of the pontomedullary junction. Now what happens uh, is as, as they're in this space, which is the cerebellar pontine cistern, cerebellar pontine cistern, I'm just going to take the first and last letters, otherwise it takes me forever to draw it out. As they leave, there is a vessel which the, they are intimately associated with, which is the ICA. So that's the 
anterior inferior cerebellar artery. And the clinical significance of that is that very rarely the ICA or branches of the ICA, very rarely they'll actually wrap around um, the, the nerves, specifically the facial nerve. And when, uh, when that's too tight, it's called a vascular loop. And the vascular loops can actually be a relatively rare cause of hemifacial spasms. If a patient has hemifacial spasm, one thing to consider is a vascular loop which is happening in that cerebellar pontine sulc in the cerebellar pontine cistern from the ICA. Now, what the uh, nerves are coursing towards is this. They're coursing towards the internal auditory canal. And uh, when when they go through the canal, it's very short. Um, this is called the internal auditory meatus. Uh, it's also called the porous. This is the opening. Uh, and they then, they then course through it, and they reach its termination, which is called the fundus. And what's very important about uh, the, the fundus is that at the, at the end of it, um, at the end of its kind of its exit, there are two ridges of bone, which actually divide the fundus into quadrants. And by this stage, even in the kind of short distance between um, between the brain stem and uh, the the fundus of the internal auditory canal, there there are already four nerves. So the vestibulococular nerve has already divided into the cochlear nerve and then the vestibular nerve and the vestibular nerve has already divided into superior and inferior vestibular nerves um, at the end of the internal auditory canal um, and so what happens is the facial nerve and by this stage the nervous intermedius and the facial motor root have joined so they're just one nerve say this is anterior, the facial nerve goes through the anterior and superior aspect um, of this, of this, um, of the exit. Uh, so it's, it's the anterior superior aspect and the cochlear nerve is the anterior inferior quadrant. And the way that you remember that uh, is through the mnemonic 7-up like the drink, and then coke, coke down. So seven up and coke down. So the facial nerve is in the anterior superior quadrant, and that's where it leaves. The vestibular nerve, um, that's horrible. Sorry, the, the cochlear nerve is in the anterior inferior quadrant, and then the two branches of the vestibular nerve occupy the posterior uh, part, so they occupy this part. So the superior vestibular nerve leads through the superior quadrant and the inferior vestibular ne nerve leads through the inferior quadrant. And the actual, there are names to these uh, bony ridges. So the horizontal ridge is called Bill's Bar. Bill's Bar. And the horizontal ridge is called the horizontal crest uh, or the falsiform crest. Um, and it's nice just to... Uh, have a quick look at the anatomy of the semicircular canals and the cochlea uh, just so that you can appreciate why the cochlea is anterior and the vestibular nerves are posterior. So the, the cochlea is sitting here more anteriorly. The semicircular canals um, are sitting more posteriorly. So that's why the, that's why the um, cochlear nerve leaves from the anterior quadrant and the vestibular nerves lead from the posterior quadrants and the facial nerve basically runs over the top um, of the vestibular cochlear apparatus so it's sitting in a superior quadrant uh, and when it leaves uh, the fundus of the internal auditory canal that is the end of the intracranial section um, and in fact right up until the fundus of the internal auditory canal the nerve uh, has been covered by dura mater and arachnoid mater, and that stops at this end of the internal auditory canal. So that is the intracranial course of the facial nerve.